See this right here? This gasket. This gasket was missing when I bought the car. Helloing people of the interwebs. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands 90% of the time. So behind me is Project Teeter Tot, my 2001 Audi TT Quattro that I named after a potato. Small potato. Potatoes are pretty cute. Really, they really are though. If you think about it, potatoes are cute. Anyway, so Project TT. Yesterday I put in a nine hour day wrenching on this thing. It was more scrubbing than wrenching. And uh, I time lapsed a bunch of it. So I'm gonna get you caught up on all the work I've been doing. My first objective was to completely disassemble the suspension on the TT since I am gonna be installing a set of new Bilstein coilovers, new end links, new wheel bearings, new hubs, and new urethane bushings. The front struts came out fairly easy. I didn't need a spring compressor because of the fact that there is a nut that holds the spring on the strut assembly as well as a nut that retains it onto the car. Once I had all that stuff out of the way, I zip tied my brake calipers up so that way they weren't hanging by the brake lines and I didn't have to bleed my brakes later on by removing everything. As far as my rear end went, that was a little bit trickier. Everything came apart brake wise fairly easy, but what became difficult was when I had to move on to the suspension. The rear struts unbolt with a nut on the top and on the bottom. However, when it came to the springs and removing them from the spring perch, I had to jack the car up with a floor jack off of the quick jacks because the rear trailing arm was pinched between the car and the quick jack assembly. All right, so now that that's over with, um, come on camera, There's something I wanna show you guys. I'm gonna turn the brightness down a little bit. Um, oh, hello. This is not what I wanted to show you. Oh, he's so awesome. It's a praying mantis. Oh, I love these things. What are you doing? Oh, are you caught? Is there a web? No. My garage started to get infested with black widow spiders that were coming off the TT. I noticed that all along my Nordschleife banner, there was little, like my German accent, there was little clusters of spider egg everywhere. And they're gone now. I completely eradicated them. So I had to do something about it. And that involved a ton of cleaning and um, more time lapse. This is the part that royally sucked. The Black Widow infestation I had on the TT was a lot worse than I originally anticipated. So I went to town with my shop vac and I sucked up all the eggs and webs and nastiness as well as use some insecticide to make sure they did not come back. Then I went to town with some degreaser and I blasted everything under the car as well as the wheel wells and any remaining suspension components that I could and took my pressure washer and absolutely destroyed my garage floor with all the grease and grime that came off. I was really surprised considering this car came from Salt Lake City, Utah at just how little there was of any corrosion other than a few bolts that had a little bit here and there and a couple suspension pieces. The chassis of the car itself has absolutely no rust, which I got really lucky. Once I had that all cleaned up, the car looked pretty close to brand new again, and I was kind of surprised at how well this cleaned up. Epoxy. I got some of this stuff. I'm gonna freshen up anything that I pulled off suspension-wise in the hubs with this stuff. And um, you guys know me, I just, I go hard in the paint. This right here, is a quarter NPT stainless steel plug. I got two different projects going on at once here. I still have the turbo to put in. Oh yeah, that's it. It was NPT. I'm going to put this thing in and I'm gonna knock out the other project that I'm doing along with the suspension. This is, this is a huge overhaul. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, that's approximately a potato, I would say. All right, Turbski. I feel like I'm opening up one of those San Pellegrino sparkling Italian beverages. You, anything else in there? No? This thing's really heavy. I'm just kind of mentally preparing myself for the suck that I'm about to endure. All right, come on. How the hell did that happen? Please, please go in your home. It goes in this way. <sighs> okay. 
why? Why couldn't I just be my hairdresser? Why do I have to do this for a living? So that guy right there, my oil return line, it needs to come around through here. I have it bent the wrong way. So nice and clean under here though. Look at that. You could eat off of it. I need my banjo kazooies so we can get this turbo buttoned up. I totally, I totally forgot I did this. Oh my God, that's funny. I, I used one of my lug studs to uh, plug up the hole on the side of the block when I was washing because it's the same thread size. I'm loosely installing all these banjo bolts now. That way I can get it mounted up on the bracket and then once everything is in its hole, I'll tighten it all down. Strategy. I just dropped my socket down inside the turbo. I actually got it. There's a bracket attached to this that goes down into hell somewhere over there. Now I gotta get the bracket that holds it in place bolted up and just Fingers crossed that that thing is not cracked from trying to move around so much. Hey Sarah, why do you always look like you get beaten? Oh, because I work on Audis. Good morning. It's day two. Three. I had stopped working last night because I had adulting to do. I had a lot of stuff I had to take care of. My lippages. That down there that you're looking at is the bracket that supports the bottom of the turbo. Problem is though, it was taking two hands for me to hold this turbo up to get the bolt in there because it gets really heavy really quick. So I gotta get creative. I don't know how I'm gonna do this unless I grow another arm. So, and I don't know what is the bolt that goes in there because the bolt that was in there before was the wrong bolt. And it says in the tech data to use only genuine hardware. Use only genuine bolts, this guy. I tried tackling it from up top for a little while and that was not working out too well. So I went through the wheel well and stuck a long punch into a hole below the turbo, what allowed me to pry up ever so gently. And then I used my right hand to thread the bolt into a captive nut. You're a captive nut. So next is an even more difficult bolt. This little tiny cap head Allen screw it goes, yeah. I have this little graboid tool thing. What I'm gonna do is use it like this to hold the bolt down inside that crevasse and then I can slide in an extended Allen thingamabobber and tighten it down. I know the proper names of the terms. I just, sometimes I get diarrhea out of the mouth. That's so gross. No idea if this is actually gonna work. This thing is so long. That's, somebody said that. Holy sh I'm way off. Okay. Oh no, well, that came off. Uh oh, this thing's not magnetic either. Oh God, this is so hard. That's what I said. Go, get in there. I gotta keep moving these cameras around for all my folk with ADHD. Don't worry, I suffer from it too. I think we all do from some extent because of smartphones. Ooh, my tires got a little bit of wear on them. I got crazy if the cheese whiz or I need an alignment. I really appreciate you OG subscribers and the new ones that are binge watching all my videos lately that stick with me through these projects. I know they take a long time and I don't have a super big budget to build wide body Lamborghinis and crazy stuff. I don't think I ever would, but my life goal is to one day build, build amazing project cars for you guys. Weird stuff that you'd never think of seeing. Just, I have so many ideas. I tightened it. That feels like 22 pound feet right there. Uh, I'm just joking, I will check it. There we go. May the car gods be with me. And have I not put something in? in the wrong order and have to take stuff apart. Please. I think before I put this in, I need to have the manifold in. I think. This is, this is so heavy. Oh God, this is heavy. Manifold's down inside there, so now I can bolt this guy on. Problem with this guy is one of the hardware is right behind my cam gear. 
So I gotta pop the cover off to get to it. Adjusto camera, cuz, there we go. Set you down. I am gonna go make a sandwich. Actually I'm not, I'm gonna make a pita. Close enough. And uh, I will see you in one second. I gotta eat. And then hopefully I can wrap up getting this turbo on. <laughs> that was very cheerleader-esque of me. Sandwich. I mean pita. It's a big difference. Pitas are much tastier. Oh, that was yummy. Back to work. Watch tongue. Be Allen Profund in Einstallen Breiten. I think what this says means that there's an Allen bolt behind the cam gear and to be caution, I think. Behind this cam gear, off to the side, is an Allen bolt that holds the shield in place. It's a huge pain in the ass to get to. Is it a six mil? I can't tell if the nut is turning. I don't think it is. There's no way this is going this easy. This is going this easy. <laughs> Shut up. There's another bolt that goes in here somewhere. There's a quail. Where is it? It's a quail. And there's a bunch of baby quails. They're so cute. I just had to show you that. I heard them outside. This right here is a new MLS gasket for the exhaust manifold in case you're wondering if I used one. I did. See? I just spent the past two or three hours getting everything kind of loosely buttoned up and getting that heat shield on there to realize that the manifold doesn't slip in like I thought it would. And have I not put something in in the wrong order? This corner of the manifold won't tuck down inside there. It's hitting this shield that was just a fight to get put back in and I think maybe the turbo. Right now there is a keyboard warrior screaming at a cell phone. Why didn't you test fit it first? That's what I would have did. I did test fit it. But when everything was snugged up, the corner was just millimeters from not fitting. Mm -hmm. I, I took the shield back out and I got the manifold on there. Come on, 35 newton meters. There we go. See this right here? This gasket. This gasket was missing when I bought the car. That means it was leaking pre-turbo. Had a huge exhaust leak before the turbo. I got some new washers. They're toothed. 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 Maybe? I wish I could use one of the cute animal filters right now because I look like smashed ass from working out in this hot garage the whole day. I wanna show you guys a tech tip real quick. Tech tip today, because I don't know if it's Tuesday. I think it is Tuesday when I'm uploading this. Tech tip Tuesday, unless you're watching it later, sorry. Anyway, uh, this is really important. There's three bolts here. To tighten this up, you wanna keep alternating between all three of these bolts and cinching the turbo up evenly because the turbo itself is heavy. And if you don't do that, you run the risk of cross-threading one of these, or having the gasket not seat properly, or just bad things will happen. I think that's why one of these was broke off. Because this turbo weighs quite a bit, and you're lifting quite a bit of weight with these little threads. So I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm not using a power tool, I'm just using my, my hands to do this, because I don't want to screw it up. I want to be able to feel this by hand. Almost. Almost. That one's getting pretty snug. That one's getting pretty snug. I'm gonna torque all these, so I'm not gonna tighten it too tight. All right. There we go. All right. All I have left is one more banjo fitting on the top of the turbo, but I'm missing the crush washers for it because I didn't buy enough when I bought them. I bought too many small ones. So I still have to uh, secure the manifold to the head with those copper nuts. Robot snacks. And then connect the uh, banjo or just the oil return line to the oil pan. And then the turbo is completely reinstalled with the exception of piping 
intercooler piping and stuff and intake piping. But um, yeah, I gotta end the video here because uh, I have to go bring the small Sarah to go pick up her car. So I'm not gonna have any time left to work on this. So next video, hopefully just button up the last things here, fill it full of fluids and start on the suspension. So that means it won't look like a hover car anymore. <laughs> it's kind of funny though, it does look like a flying car. So yeah, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye. I'm working on the TT. I'm working on suspension and I'm a Sarah and here's a thumbnail. <laughs>